ESC, or Electronic Stability Control, has been called the greatest single advance in auto safety since the seatbelt. Hi, I'm Jim Kenzie, and I'm here today to convince you that ESC, Think Anti-Skid Control, is a must-have feature for your vehicle and your safety. To help understand how ESC works, I'm talking to a master of skid control, Matt White, who just happens to be the 2007 Canadian Formula Ford Challenge overall champion. Matt, how would you define a skid, and how would you handle it in your race car? First of all, Jim, thanks for inviting me here today, and congratulations on your recent success in the Targa Newfoundland Rally. Obviously, you know about car control also. The two main skids that can occur in a race car, and a road car for that matter, is oversteer or the fishtail, when the back of the car slides out, and if not corrected, spins out. Next is understeer or pushing, and this occurs when the driver turns the steering wheel, but the car continues to go straight ahead. Now both of these skids are controlled in a race car by responding with specific steering and throttle responses. This is a skill all race car drivers have, but it takes years to master. And just for the record, a car never loses control. It's the driver that loses control. Electronic Stability Control is an innovative system that constantly monitors the driver's intention and vehicle performance. When the system detects that a difference may occur between a vehicle's motion and the driver's input, the system intervenes, so the vehicle maintains the intended direction. During an oversteering or skidding condition, the vehicle's rear end has a tendency to skid. ESC applies the brake to the outer front wheel, counteracting the oversteer condition. During an understeering or sliding condition, the vehicle's front end has a tendency to slide out. ESC will brake the rear wheel on the inside of the vehicle turn, counteracting the understeer condition. Four wheel speed sensors, a lateral acceleration sensor, a yaw rate sensor, and a steering angle sensor monitor the driver's steering, acceleration, and braking commands 100 or more times a second. The system then compares where the vehicle is going with the driver's intended destination. When there's a disparity between the two, the system brakes specific wheels before oversteering or understeering becomes a critical challenge. Watch this oversteering or skidding condition. The vehicle's rear end has a tendency to skid. Viewed from above, this causes the vehicle to twist around its center of rotation, shown here by the arrow. ESC applies the brake to the outer front wheel, counteracting the oversteer condition. As shown here, applying the brake to the outer front wheel slows down that corner of the vehicle. The net effect is to twist the vehicle back around its center of rotation, to bring the vehicle back to the driver's intended destination. Now, watch this understeering or sliding condition. The vehicle's front end has a tendency to slide out. As seen from above, the vehicle resists turning as sharply as the driver commands. ESC applies the brake to the rear wheel on the inside of the vehicle turn and may reduce engine power as required to counteract the understeer condition. As shown here, applying the brake to the inner rear wheel reduces its side force and slows down that corner of the vehicle. The net effect is to twist the vehicle around to the driver's intended destination. Now ESC always incorporates another high-tech system, ABS or anti-lock braking, and it's important to know how they work together. As long as a driver keeps the vehicle on a paved road, dry or wet, ABS has a definite advantage over non-ABS vehicles when measured in crashes and injury. Braking and steering in an emergency is easily accomplished while maintaining control. Just stomp, look where you want to go, and steer. However, when a vehicle leaves the road at speed, typically because of a loss of control by the driver, ABS-equipped vehicles increase the possibility of injury and fatality by up to 40%. So how can this happen? Simulating an off-road experience at the same speed, with the ABS on, took 117.2 meters before coming to a stop. Disconnecting the ABS, 
and repeating the off-road stop took 77.3 meters. Our test results validated that going off the road at speed with ABS can require very long stopping distances. Now combine that with a driver who has already lost control and the possibility of having a rollover or impacting with fixed objects just might be the cause of that 40% increase in fatal crashes. Anytime you drive on a deformable surface, such as gravel, sand, snow, slush, or grass, your stopping distance with ABS will be extended. Without ABS, locked wheels can dig into the soft surface and build up a dam effect, helping to slow the vehicle. So if losing control and going off the road can be that deadly and you don't have the skills of a pro racing driver, perhaps you should make ESC a priority on your car shopping list. Stomp, look where you want to go and steer. And with ESC, stay on the road. Let's check out a Transport Canada video Matt has brought with him regarding winter driving. Stability control is, is a huge asset when it comes to vehicle safety. It's already proven to be a, an improvement in terms of the crashes, the number of crashes that we're seeing in the real world. That's an excellent thing. The other excellent thing is that you do not need to train the driver as to how to use it. The potential worry is that the driver doesn't have the appropriate tires on that vehicle, therefore it doesn't maximize the ability of this electronic hydraulic system. So very, very important that they do have the proper tires because you still cannot exceed the laws of physics. If you don't have any traction, it doesn't matter what type of magic system you got on the car, you don't have traction, you're going off the road. And it's very, very important to have four winter tires on your car. Without having the same traction on all four wheels, your vehicle's unstable and you're gonna have a control difficulty. And in order for ESC and ABS to do their thing, they must get consistent signals from all four wheels, which means you should have the same level of grip on all four wheels. Regular tire and brake maintenance will also help. Now the second tidbit I found interesting is that winter tires aren't just about tread patterns that grip on snow or ice, but rubber compounds that work well at low temperatures. Now Matt, your racing experience has something to say about that too, doesn't it? Yes. I tested an Indy Lights race car last November in the US, and I was lapping on an oval at over 300 kilometers an hour. Now, the test had to be postponed twice due to cool weather because the race tires are unable to get up to working temperatures if the air temperature is below 10 degrees Celsius. All tires are designed to work in specific heat ranges, which is another reason why winter tires outperform so-called all-season tires once the temperature gets down to about six degrees Celsius. So, winter tires for winter conditions, proper tires for summer, and a vehicle that is equipped with ESC. Together, these make up a package that will generate the most safety you can get in the vehicle when it comes down to driver control. Now, there's one more thing you should consider. Matt's racing car doesn't make him the champion that he is. He knows how to drive. He was trained by professionals at the novice and advanced levels. And we're fortunate in Canada to have some great driver training schools that can teach you how to handle your car in difficult conditions, or better still, to avoid difficult conditions before they get out of hand. Advanced technology and advanced training, they're all part of a package that can really help save lives. ESC, you just gotta have it. Matt, thanks for being here today. My pleasure. And thanks to you for watching.